All these activities of the Marantia and spirit world are real. To spirit beings, the spirit world is a reality. To us, the material world is more unreal. The higher forms of spirit freely pass through ordinary matter. Are you with me now? Mm -hmm. It isn't there. High spirits are reactive to nothing material except certain of the basic energies. And when they say reactive, I mean that to mean means perceptive, too. It doesn't register on them in any way, shape, or form. But just the art of conversation would erase that? Uh, let's go on. <laughs> to material beings, the spirit world is more or less unreal. To spirit beings, the material world is almost entirely unreal, being merely a shadow of the substance of spirit realities. I say that to the thought adjuster, this world is just as imperceptible as the thought adjuster is imperceptible to us, or as a seraphim is imperceptible to us. The archangel goes on. I cannot, with exclusive spirit vision, perceive the building in which this narrative is being translated and recorded. A divine counselor from Uversa, who chances to stand by my side, perceives still less of these purely material creations. We discern how these material structures appear to you by viewing a spirit counterpart presented to our minds by one of our attending energy transformers. This material being is not exactly real to me, a spirit being, but it is, of course, very real and very serviceable to material morals. Now you feel that... Uh, this thought adjuster registers very much of this world in which we now live. And I, I take pleasure in trying now and then to tell this thought adjuster a little bit about what this world means to me. Yes. As a preview. <laughs> is the ice cream and cake of the relationship. This is not the business of the partnership. This is having your partner and his wife out for dinner. You're not going to talk business. At least your wives hope that evening. This is being friends. Mm -hmm. There is no reason for this except it's fun. This is a luxury. Look, you can go all the way through the mansion worlds without Marantia companions. They're not necessary but they provide them, their personality luxuries. You could go through the paradise regime without paradise companions, but they provide them. They are personality luxuries. This is not just an efficient universe. This is a romantic universe. And I think a certain amount of romance is in order and is necessary to healthful relationships between personal and potentially personal beings. If the thought adjuster is your friend, act friendly. Bob, anyway, if the idea appeals to you, give it a whirl. And if you think it's silly, forget it. Question. You the problem there is the fact that you're spiritually deaf. And it's so darn seldom that you ever hear him. I will merely make this flat statement. I've never been sure of hearing mine at any time in my life. I've never doubted that when I was talking it was a dialogue. I just happened to be deaf, that's all. In fact, I'm so hard-boiled in my attitude, if I ever did hear a voice, I'd probably immediately consult a psychiatrist. I'd decide it was the initial stages of paranoia. Uh, I don't know, an unreasoned conviction. An unreasoned conviction. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I can't offer any proof, and yet I know. Mm -hmm. I just know. You. Yes, I, I have the satisfaction of a dialogue. That's what's known as your personal religious experience. Yeah, I can't prove it's more than a monologue, but I I know it's a dialogue, mm -hmm. and I can't blame the adjuster because I'm hard of hearing. Ruth, I can conceive of a lot of other folks being here. I wouldn't be at all surprised, but what, there was somebody from the, oh, maybe a rep representative of the religious guardians who sponsor churches, who was saying, tisk, 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 I wish this character from Chicago were more ecclesiastical-minded. <laughs> and maybe there's a colleague, rep 
representing the seraphim of progress who says, shut up, sister, you people have balled things up bad enough in the past. Thank the Lord he isn't a theologian, you know? And and heaven knows who else will be here. <coughs> wouldn't surprise me at all. I'll tell you something else that I, wouldn't surprise me. On August 21st, at various places all over the earth, people are going to be thinking about Jesus' birthday, and this will be one of the few places where it will be celebrated. <coughs> and it wouldn't surprise me at all, but what there would be many more personalities in this room than Fred Squires could count when he takes official inventory. But I don't believe that on the finite level, God chooses to foreknow whether human beings survive or not. And I'll give you a good illustration. When you deal with deity, you're dealing with levels of consciousness. And I think the best way to learn about God the Father is to study the life of Michael. Michael sometimes, after the baptism, I'm talking about when he functioned really as a descending son, <coughs> as a bestowal son, you have an interesting problem of the consciousness of the human Jesus, Joshua ben Joseph, who was a real man among men, and you've also got the consciousness of a paradise creator son. And the papers point to some telltale evidences of the two levels. Jesus is talking to a backslidden Jew, and he forgets himself. And he says, I think it was Ezra, he says, Ezra, Ezra's all worried about God is mad at him, you know? And he says, Ezra, he says, uh, you're the father of many children. Now he says, you don't stay mad at your children. And the old boy looked at him and says, but Rabbi, who told you I was the father of five children? The human consciousness forgot that this didn't belong there. Again, and this is not my speculation, you'll find this, this is the midwayer speculation. When the messenger from Bethany came to Jesus at the end of the Perean mission, bearing word from Martha and Mary, saying, Lord, he whom you love is sick to the death, Jesus stopped, thought, and said, no, this sickness is really not to the death. He knew precisely what he was going to do. His detached, personalized adjuster issued orders to the thought adjuster of Lazarus, stand by, don't depart for Divinington. Now, when he arrived at Bethany, here is the creator's son who knows all things, he said to, who was it, ran out to meet him? Probably Mary. He said, where have you laid him? The human Jesus didn't any more know where they'd put him than you or I would know. And as the midwares say, it appears that at times he chose to be limited by just what his human consciousness would know at that time. Otherwise, he would have denied himself all adventure during his public ministry. Let's set up a concept. Yeah, yeah I'm going to stay on this subject now. Don't do, up to uh, up to the baptism, he operated strictly as a human being. Now, stop and consider, Dorothy. If he'd been just a human being, he'd have fused with his thought adjuster and left this world. He had done all that God asks a man to do. His post-baptismal life on earth is not as just a, as a human being. He is now functioning as a...